Yes, sir. Uh, Travis, how you doing tonight? Terrell Thomas. How do you see Cam Reddish fitting into what you're building here, of course, in Atlanta? And did you feel like he was a steal falling to you with the number 10 pick? Yeah, well, I mean, we were in contact with Cam and his representatives throughout the whole process. Uh, obviously, we brought him here in Atlanta. Uh, he's a guy that we identified early on in the process, you know, all the way back to when he was in high school. Um, what we like about Cam is obvious, right? Uh, the length, the skill set, and you can dribble pass, he can shoot. He's a good defensive player. Uh, played on the ball a lot in high school. Um, and then he had to take a step back this year uh, at Duke, and he did that willingly. Um, so we love his commitment to a team uh, and his skill set. So we're extremely excited he's there. Um, you know, being in con close contact with his agents, we had we had a, an idea that he might get there. Um, so um, we rolled the dice a little bit, and, and it worked out for us. Please uh, raise your hand, and we'll bring you a mic. And uh, please state your name and affiliation when you ask your question. Thank you. Okay, over here, Kevin Taylor, Taylor May Sports. And uh, Travis, oh, okay. <laughs> Travis uh, when did you find out that uh, you really wanted to take Cam at number 10, and what was it about him that you really liked for him to go at that level? Uh, well, we found out as soon as the ninth pick came in <laughs> that Cam was going to be our guy. Uh, but uh, like I just said, you know, we, we throughout the process, you know, we're constantly talking to the agents, uh, talking to other teams, just trying to get a sense who might be where in the draft. Uh, and obviously, we had the 10th pick, and we felt there was a great opportunity that he might be there, and, and we kind of gambled on it. You know, we had him ranked higher than that on our board, but uh, we felt like we might be able to get him there. And so we rolled the dice, and we won today. It's better to be lucky than good sometimes. Dan Matthews, 6A, the fan, Dickie Broadcasting. Uh, just getting Cam from a program like Duke, you got Amari last year from a national champion. How important is it as you develop this roster to get guys in here that come in from a culture of winning? No, it's very important. You know, we talked about this as this year played out this year. I got lots of questions about, oh, you guys shouldn't be winning these games down the end. Uh, you're hurting your draft status. Uh, listen, we want guys that know how to win, that know how to close games. And, and being able to learn that process in high school, in college, in the NBA, uh, is all extremely valuable. Travis, uh, Cam shot 31% in his last eight college games. He didn't shoot the ball very well. What are you guys seeing differently than what's in the stats? Well, I don't want to make excuses for him, but I, you know he played with some injuries this year. Um, and then, listen, guys go through streaks. Uh, we, we have a ton of confidence in his ability to shoot the ball. Um, and we think with more and more reps, he's just going to get better and better. Hi, I'm Manny Morgan with the AJC. Um, you guys had a lot of draft picks uh, in the later round, but you kind of dealt them out. What's your mindset into doing that instead of um, kind of drafting other kind of players for G League? Um, I'm sorry? So, you guys have a lot of draft picks in the second round. What was your prop, uh, your mindset in um, dealing those out instead of getting younger players for the GV? Yeah, um, so, you know, going through the process, it, we, you know, we had five picks, maybe potentially more um, as the draft played out. Um, we knew we didn't want to have five plus rookies on the roster. So we did the best we could to try to figure out how to maximize each pick best we could. So with some of the second round picks that we traded away, we got future second round picks, kind of kick them down the line. And those are valuable, even the protected one. Like the protected pick, we can use in a trade. Any deal that we would do now, between now and 2024, we could use that in a traded player, in a cash trade. You, you need those picks to make transactions. So, so they hold value. Um, and then you're allowed to take in $5 million of cash a year. Um, so when teams are gonna give us a future second and cash, we're gonna try to maximize that as well. I think to, to maybe answer your question, I, I know a lot of people, and I said we didn't just want to sell picks. We didn't, but if we can get cash thrown on top of any transaction, that, that's never a bad thing. Connor Phillips with the Shadow League. I know it was early, still June, still have free agency and summer league and all that happening before the season gets started. But looking at the roster and what you had before the night started and what you could potentially have when the night ends, 
What does that say about what you guys are, are the, the style of play and the brand of basketball you're looking to play this year? Well, I mean, you saw this year, you know, we want to play fast, up and down game. We want to space the floor and we have multiple guys out on the floor that can make plays. Um, so we're looking to add multi-dimensional players, you know, guys that can play multi-positions, players with great length, um, and, you know, guys that can play some defense on the wing. Allison Mastrangelo, WSB. Uh, overall, I know it's still a little bit early, but how would you rate your draft? I mean, were you surprised by some of the things that were able to work out for you and how they fell, or was it exactly kind of how you thought it would play? We're really excited about our draft, and I think we'll even be more excited about it on July 6th. <laughs> Travis, uh, Dimitri Chin, Action Sports and News. Um, obviously, you guys have a lot of uh, great young talent on this roster. Um, you know, with Cam being added to the roster now, uh, what is the role that you kind of envision for him? And, you know, is it possible that he will crack the starting lineup um, come the beginning of the season? Yeah, that, unfortunately, that's not my job, um, but we're excited to be able to add, add him to the mix. Uh, we love his skill set. Uh, we think he's going to be a great fit for the way we want to play. Uh, so, so we're really excited to have him. Can you just update us where Cam is uh, on the injury? New York. <laughs> oh, <I'm sorry. laughs> on the injury front, and might he be ready for summer league, or is there a plan there? Yeah, no, I don't think he'll quite be ready for um, summer league. They said it was a six to eight week process. I think we're about four weeks into that, so he probably won't get on the court till the end of July. Um, but, you know, we'll get him in here um, next week and, you know, we'll get on top of his rehab. We had him in here last week, so, so we've seen him. Our doctors have seen him. Everything's coming along great on that front, so uh, we don't have any concerns about his injury. But, he, unfortunately, he probably won't be able to play in summer league. Hi, uh, Greg Harry, three-point conversion. Was, going into the draft, was there a focus more on finding versatile players or more on players that you felt could, uh, that could defend well? Uh, we've really focused on a couple guys, uh, and again, multi-dimensional players that can play both sides of the ball. Um, and, you know, we kind of locked in on a couple guys, and we thought if we can pull this off, you know, it'll be a home run. I went on my, uh, my walk today around, uh, down to Cheshire Bridge and back, and it started pouring, and I came back, and it, so it just cleansed it off all the dirt for me, I guess, or something. So things worked out, and we, uh, got lucky, and Cam was there for us. Alex Glaze with 11 Alive. I guess when you were on that walk and you're kind of going through your mind with how tonight's going to go, could tonight have gone any better than it, than it did for you guys? Um, no, we're, we're really excited the way, the way it played out for us. Uh, I guess it always can go better and time will tell, but we feel good about um, the way it played out for us tonight. On Cam, a lot of a lot has been made of Cam's finishing and how he does. He wasn't very efficient two point range. Is that a concern for you moving forward? Is it something where you can improve on? What do you make of his concern with that? No, I mean, just, he did struggle a little bit, but I, we think he's got a great skill set. You know, he's got the ability to finish with both hands. I think you know there was a lot of traffic in the lane at Duke this year. You know, besides Cam, there weren't a lot of shooters on the team. So getting used to that. So we feel like once he gets up here, we have more space on the floor because we're going to have more shooters out there. And with practice and getting stronger, being able to finish through contact, we, we, we're not concerned with that at all. Hey, Travis. Paul Newberry from Associated Press. One more thing, kind of big picture, um, with what who you'll have on the roster come July 6th. And with even looking ahead the next summer with a lot of the big contracts you currently have that won't be around anymore. Is this sort of falling into place? You obviously had a pretty long range plan that you, you put into effect. Is it this kind of where you thought it would be, even a little ahead of schedule or uh, no, where do you think things are? No, I mean, we feel good about the way the drafts have played out for us. Um, you know, this is my third draft here, so, so we feel good, you know, if you think back all the way to, what was it, 2019, 17, I guess. Um, I walked out and told you we were really excited about John Collins. We had him rated higher, and, you know, he's he's been great. Uh, last year, you know, we made a big move and a big gamble, and we feel like that really paid off. And 
this year we, we feel like we got lucky again. I mean, I say it all the time. It's better to be lucky and good in this business. And I'll tell you, take being lucky. And we've been lucky the last few years. The guys that we like have been there when we pick. These will be the last two. All right, Christian Crittenden, Sports X. Um, at what point did you identify Cam as a guy that you felt needed to be in the Atlanta Hawks uh, uniform? Was it during his high school days, or was there a moment at Duke where you saw him and decided that he needed to be in the Hawks uniform? Well, no, I mean, he's been on the, the stage for a while, right? He's played on Team USA, so we've seen him for a long time. He's not a secret. You know, he was in our gym last year at McDonald's All-American game, so he's a guy that we've been watching for a while and um, certainly a guy that um, we've tracked and obviously liked, and we're extremely excited to have him. Uh, Harrison Coburn with Sports Talk ATL here. Uh, essentially, you ended up trading Luca for Trey and Cam Reddish. Uh, now that you know the exact personnel behind the trade, how are you feeling about that? I, mean, I hope we're done with this. Uh, listen, Luca's a, Luke a good player. Dallas got a good player. We obviously are excited about the two players we got. Uh, I, I, we feel like it worked out for both teams. Thank you. Thanks, guys.